I have tried to play him as rather like uh, Raphael, like a fallen angel. Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula is the greatest Dracula slash vampire film ever made. Interview with the vampire being a close second, but the way in which Coppola went about making the film makes this film stand far apart from really anything else. Uh, more evocative of dreams and psychology than strictly speaking uh, just you know reality. The film is very psychological, surreal, and almost even psychedelic. Much of what you see is not meant to be looked at entirely literally. Coppola is a master of using visual metaphor and allegory in order to evoke feeling. I love him! I love him! Coppola remained faithful to Stoker's novel, keeping characters entirely intact, unlike many other adaptations of Dracula, but added his own layer on top of the book, which only seeks to enhance and connect the story on a deep philosophical level. And I could see that in most of the scenes, Harker is called Renfield, and Lucy is the one in love, but she's married to Harker, and, and they just totally played havoc with Stoker's novel. You know, In the book, Dracula and Mina do not have a love-based origin story. Dracula's name and origin in the novel is a complete mystery. But in the film, adding the historical element of Vlad and Mina's tragic romance as a result of the holy war in which Vlad fought, sparks the philosophical or metaphysical question as to the origins of evil itself. I feel that Dracula is very sacramental, and Dracula, in an odd way, is kind of like Christ-like. Vlad or Dracula, feeling so devastated or betrayed over the death of his bride, chooses to reject God. And it's about the sacrament, and it's about also God's ultimate responsibility and pledge to us, as well as ours to God's, because God is an element in the story. And the whole question of evil, evil God plays a role. How much are humans driven to evil as a result of the loss and absence of love? It's a moral question every moral human faces on some level. There's always that good and bad paralleling one another. Um, makes it more interesting. Giving this tragic human element to Dracula versus the book makes him far more interesting as an antagonist. You can both empathize and relate with him, but also be horrified. Vlad and Mina really operate as archetypes in the film. Mina as this sort of divine feminine force. Vlad as this extremely, extremely wounded masculine. And you are one of the lights, dear Mina. The light of all light. Dracula's loss of this love and feelings of betrayal towards God in a sense crucifies him and causes him to fall from grace. All humans on some scale can relate to this sense of loss and tragedy, which is what makes this potential for absolute corruption so disturbing. The idea was to portray Dracula finally as a charismatic, tragic hero that he really was. Lucy is another character who operates on an archetypal level. The choice of the name Lucy is not an accident. The female version of Lucy Fur. Helsing states that Lucy being selected by Dracula was not an accident, but it was a choice on Lucy's part. Lucy is not a random victim attacked by mere accident, do you understand? No. She's a willing recruit, a breathless follower, a wanton follower, I dare say a devoted disciple. As if Lucy's boundarylessness and gluttonous way of operating is what attracted and allowed Dracula to take her in the first place. The men she is interested in are merely there to be fed on and used. Blood drinking is just the progression of that. Lucifer also a figure who rejects God's law, which is essentially boundaries of the objective and moral world. With Dracula preying on everyone that's in Mina's life, Lucy and Jonathan Harker, it adds this element of distortion to the original love that Vlad had towards Mina. Passionate love redirected and distorted into a diabolical, destructive force. You tortured and impaled thousands of people. I served the cross in vain. I was betrayed. Look what your God has done to me. The war with God is over. This proposes the question, how much of evil is a result of distortion and corruption? How much of evil is a result of rebelling against the self? All evil is inherently self-destructive at some point. This was a man who lost his soul. How many of us people, people today, renounce our blood tie to the, to the creation, to the creative spirit, and, and become Draculas, uh, become living dead, become soulless? One of the main elements that makes this film so great is the use of practical old school effects. Coming out of magicians and illusions and, and basically magic tricks, I would only use effects done as they would have been done in 1900. 
The use of practical effects enhances the visual metaphor or visual allegories of the film. It gives such a surreal effect that can't be done with modern CGI. The whole film feels as if Dracula is watching over and influencing everything that's occurring, cracking into people's minds. I await your command. The use of miniatures and being entirely done on a soundstage enhances this feeling. The film feels like you are watching a stage performance rather than a film. Somehow you were in touching another realm and all the rules of physics would be off. Many scenes operate in a way in which is very psychological. You're not sure if what is occurring is in the mind of the character or in literal reality. That is what makes the use of these visual metaphors so powerful. Sort of to distance, distance the audience from the idea that this was literal reality. Anthony Hopkins' depiction of Van Helsing is also unmatched. The metaphysician perfectly acts as exposition for much of the film, bringing light to the philosophical and metaphysical questions of Dracula and evil itself. The ethics and ideals of Christian civilization are concerned. In fact, civilization and civilization have advanced together. <laughs> A worthy opponent and antagonist to Dracula himself, a character that embodies the bridge between science and the occult, alchemical, mystical woo-woo, science without some degree of philosophy and creativeness is dead, really. Jack, you are a scientist. Do you not think there are things in this universe which you cannot understand and which are true? I don't know about vampires, but I believe that life is a kind of dream. I think it's an illusion. I suppose in that illusion there is room for the darker forces. Yes, Keanu Reeves acting at times is cringe, and apparently Johnny Depp had the potential to be cast in the role, which I do think would have been amazing. But still, Keanu Reeves' pureness and innocence still fits in perfectly in contrast to Dracula and his evil vampire women. His cringe, terrible accent is actually enjoyable. I have offended you with my ignorance, Count. And his rapid progression into the silver-gray hair. To contrast, Dracula's youthening is also absolutely hilarious. It is probably the part of the film that is most flawed, but still somehow works perfectly. Terminator 2 is all computer graphics, and this is like, you know, ropes and mirrors and, you know, that kind of hocus pocus. The movie feels more like studying a painting, evoking a feeling, rather than a clear, linear story. All of the chaotic visual metaphors of the story somehow connects together perfectly. There truly is no other film like it. It stands apart entirely, especially from any other Dracula or vampire movie. It is the extremely rare instance where a film adds on and improves the original book, but then at the same time doesn't take away from it and actually makes reading the original source material that much more appealing. Anyways, I think that's about all I have to say on Coppola's Dracula. It is an absolute masterpiece. Anyone who doesn't agree, I think just has no taste at all, so. The master whole life in hand. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, comment below, and bye. In my beautiful land, your friend, deep.